old black gay man just getting started in his life. Dre was a young man full of life. He had joy, he had dreams. Now, unfortunately, because of a terrible act of violence, Dre's family and friends won't get to see those dreams become reality or feel the joy of his presence any longer. But when we say we want justice, we're talking about now. To demand this brother will not be forgotten. Let's lift DeAndre's name high, keep his family close to our heart, and continue our work even more diligently to build a safer world for us all. Join me as we say his name and ensure his story is never forgotten. DeAndre Matthews! DeAndre Matthews! DeAndre Matthews! DeAndre Matthews! DeAndre Matthews! Thank you. In light and power, and may we all continue to say DeAndre's name and remember his story. Thank you. Danielle Matthews gave birth to her baby boy, DeAndre Matthews, who was also referred to as Dre, in Brooklyn, New York City. The firstborn boy to his mother, firstborn grandson to his grandmother, and firstborn nephew to his auntie. According to his friends and family, growing up, DeAndre was a jokester with an incredible sense of humor. He loved laughing and making people laugh. He enjoyed spending time with his loved ones, driving, and playing video games. You know, just an all-around wholesome young man. And while most teenagers were just trying to figure out what they were going to wear to school next day, DeAndre was focused on his future. After graduating from high school, he immediately continued his education at Broome Community College, a state university of New York. He was studying criminal justice in the business and professional studies division as a student village resident in his journey to becoming a social worker. He had this burning desire for helping people and wanted to make a change in the world. And while going to college, he obtained employment on Empire. Boulevard in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn at Buggy's Car Rental, which is one of two jobs he had so he could financially support himself and pay for college. DeAndre definitely had his eye on the prize, had a clear vision, and played a pivotal role as an example for his little sister, Dejanae Gillespie. If I'm mispronouncing Dejanae's name, I do apologize for that. Please forgive me. Now, let's go back in time a little. You see, DeAndre, being the family-oriented young man, that he was happy to be. In his early teens, he made the decision to live in his truth and tell his close loved ones who he truly was as he revealed his orientation as gay. And thankfully, he was blessed enough to where his family treated him no different. They supported him and they loved on him all the same. Fast forward back to his late teens earlier this year when his loved ones' lives would change forever. It was Monday evening, February 6, 2023, when DeAndre's mom noticed her son had and come home from work as he normally would. She saw him that morning when he left for work and sent him a text later that evening giving him permission to use her car because he had wanted to use her car as he normally did. He came and picked up the car at approximately 5.45 p.m. but she didn't see him or hear from him after that. The next morning at approximately 2.30 a.m. Danielle's mother called her and asked her where her car was because it wasn't outside of the residence where Danielle lived. Danielle described that phone call as the worst she's ever received in her life. She said she looked out her window and saw that the car indeed was not there. And that's when she frantically began calling her son's phone non-stop, but there was no answer. So she decided to go ahead and report him missing. Well, later that afternoon at approximately 4 p.m. on Tuesday, February 7th, 2023, police responded to a 911 call and found 19-year-old DeAndre's severely burned body with a gun. 
got wound to the head on freight train tracks near 2236 Nostrand Avenue near Brooklyn College in the Flatbush section of Brooklyn. EMS pronounced him dead on arrival. After an autopsy was conducted, medical examiners revealed there were signs of smoke inhalation before death and did rule his demise as a homicide with the gun wound in his head being the actual cause of death. Now before the discovery of DeAndre's body was the discovery of Danielle's Jeep Cherokee several miles away from his body at 1600 Troy Avenue, only 10 minutes away from their home. DeAndre would often use his mom's Jeep to travel back and forth from work to school and home. The Jeep was found by way of Danielle tracking its location at approximately 3.30 a.m. that morning but was found to be significantly burned, which naturally raised questions and concerns surrounding the nature of the crime. Danielle told ABC News, quote, when the police opened the door, smoke was coming out my back seat. I knew my son was gone from that moment, end quote. She brought attention to the fact that the car was set on fire and then DeAndre's body was removed and relocated onto the train tracks, which is really wild when you think about that because what that tells me is his murder was either stood there and watched the blaze until it died down to remove his body from the vehicle or they came back after the fire went out and then removed his body but i'm wondering how did anyone not smell that no one reported a fire as it was happening i know new yorkers we mind our business but if there's a fire somewhere we will call the fire department so i don't know how an entire vehicle engulfed in flames didn't catch anyone's attention as it was happening but moving right along danielle was learning more and more of the gruesome details of what happened to her son along with the public she told cbs new york quote i want justice for my son my son got off of work Monday Monday, and then that was it, end quote. His sister, Dejanay, was also broken apart, speaking to the network while describing the character of her beloved brother. She talked about how he was never in any trouble, never bothered anyone, wasn't into the street life, and how disgusted she was that he was taken away from them in such a brutal way. His mother described him as charismatic, enthusiastic, self-motivating, harmless, the life of the party, caring, and such an empathetic person. She expressed sorrow as she described her feelings saying quote now as a mother I'm suffering my daughter don't have a big brother my sister don't have a nephew my mother don't have a grandson I'm hurt I'm angry I'm lost that was my first child he was my first true love he taught me how to be a mother who would kill a beautiful soul like that end quote DeAndre's friend Daviana Miley said quote he was just so nice to people just always too nice and sometimes people could take that for granted end quote another part of this that makes me so sad is knowing that DeAndre had actually just started working at the buggy car rental place just one month before this happened. One of his co-workers who asked to remain anonymous said they were shocked. They said he was just a baby and was very quiet, kept to himself, came in to do his job and go home. During a vigil in DeAndre's honor, his mother struggled to even find the words to express herself other than feeling angry. She couldn't even find the words to describe her son. That's how hurt she was. Now, initially no one knew who could have done this to DeAndre. Burned, shot to death, and thrown onto train tracks? That is how a Flatbush family found 19-year-old DeAndre Matthews earlier this month. And now they're calling for justice and demanding the killers turn themselves in. News 12 Jericho Tran spoke with them today about why they believe their son's death was the result of a hate crime. My grandson was brutally, brutally murdered. A cold reality no family should ever have to face. I can't eat. I can't sleep. Sometimes I don't even know if I want to breathe. The heartache starting on the morning of February 7th when DeAndre's mother, Danielle, realized her son was missing. I began to call my son. My son did not answer. DeAndre borrowed his mother's car the day before, so Danielle tracked her car down to 1600 Troy Avenue. When I located my vehicle, my vehicle was burnt. There was no signs of my son. Her first thought after the grim find. My son's gone. Police found DeAndre's body about five minutes away on the freight train tracks near Flatbush Junction. His body was burned and he was shot in the head. I miss my grandson. A grandson, a son, and a brother. He worked two jobs and attended the State University of New York at Binghamton, majoring in criminal justice. He was working from 9 to 5 and 7 at night to 3 in the morning, like every day. 
He was working hard. His best personality traits? He was a funny kid. He was a sweet kid. DeAndre was trying to find the good in every, anyone. And I believe that was his downfall. With the people responsible for DeAndre's death still on the loose, the family can only speculate why he was murdered. Maybe because he was a black gay man. I don't know. I'm not sure. But they are certain DeAndre's killers will be brought to justice. I know every time you kill us, look at the phones, look on internet, y'all seeing DeAndre Matthews, my son, and I promise you y'all gonna get caught. For the people, person, people that are responsible for taking my grandson away from us, y'all would be caught. Justice would be given for DeAndre. And you're heartless, cruelless, and emotionless. In Flatbush, Jericho Tran, News 12. And DeAndre's grandmother didn't lie. March went by, April went by, but DeAndre's family never gave up on their mission to find out who was responsible for the murder of their beloved angel. Danielle also gave major credit to the detectives of the 70th precinct for being with her every step of the way. So shout outs to the detectives. And all their efforts paid off because on Thursday, May 4th, 2023, an arrest by the NYPD was finally made. 24-year-old Remy McPrestia, I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, was arrested and charged with concealment of a human corpse and tampering with evidence. A week later on Thursday, May 11th, 2023, at approximately 10.30 p.m., 19-year-old Isaiah Baez, the same age as DeAndre, was arrested and charged with murder criminal possession of a weapon, and tampering with physical evidence. I'm wondering if Remy's goofy ass ended up telling on Isaiah. I don't even know how he allowed a teenager to tell him what to do at his big grown age. But anyway, Danielle watched a video of Isaiah being walked out of the 70th precinct the next morning in cuffs and told a News 12 reporter she feels that Isaiah deserves everything that's coming to him and deserves to rot in jail. She says she couldn't bring herself to even forgive him at that time. To a News 12 exclusive as closure for one Brooklyn mother comes just three months after her 19-year-old son was killed. And News 12's Phil Tate spoke exclusively with the grieving mother of DeAndre Matthews, who tells us tonight that she will not stop her fight as she's now one step closer to justice. He deserves any and everything that he gets. He deserves every day to rot in that jail. Raw reaction from Brooklyn mother Danielle Matthews watching video of her son's DeAndre's accused killer walked out of the 70th precinct just hours ago. Why'd you do it? I cannot, I cannot forgive him. And I would not forgive him as of right now. Police have now arrested and charged 19-year-old Isaiah Baez with murder, criminal possession of a weapon, and tampering with physical evidence. Matthews thankful for investigators' hard work. The detectives on this job, they they was dealing with me day by day. Earlier this month, 24-year-old Remy McPrecia, who police say was also involved, was charged with concealment of a human body and tampering with physical evidence. It, it just was evil. You shot my son and then you burnt my son. For Matthews, it's a nightmare she wished she could wake up from that started back on February 7th. That's when she noticed her son was missing, but investigators would find her son burned, to death and thrown on the freight tracks near Flatbush Junction. And you overkilled him because you didn't want to come out and be real within yourself. Because everybody know my son, DeAndre Matthews was a gay black man. He was gay. Everybody knows this. Why did you kill him? As Matthews still questions the motive behind the murder, a bright future now stolen from the 19-year-old who attended Sudi Binghamton majoring in criminal justice and an immeasurable loss for the family he left behind. My mother, DeAndre's grandmother, like he was the first boy in my family. That's her first grandson. That's my sister, first nephew. That's my daughter, only brother. Like. He don't even know what he took. As these charges are just days ahead of Mother's Day, there's a sense of loss, but also hope to hold on to the memory of her son. I got faith. I got faith. I have faith. At the time, police said they didn't have a motive for why Isaiah killed 
DeAndre. And when I was done with doing all of my research, they still didn't have a motive. Danielle said, police told her that Isaiah called Remy and asked for his assistance with the disposal of DeAndre's body. Phone records of DeAndre's show that before he was dumped on the tracks, his body was actually driven to Staten Island and then back to Brooklyn. His mother told the Daily News, quote, Isaiah killed my baby and he was riding around with his body in the back seat of the car. Tell Isaiah, go to hell, end quote. And I felt her on that. Speaking of mothers, Isaiah's mother actually spoke to the Daily News and she opted for her name to remain private. She said she knew nothing about what happened and was shocked that her 19 year old son was capable of murder. She said he had called her to tell her he was arrested that night, but didn't want to tell her what for. Now, what was the reason? Well, it is believed that this story is a tale we all know too well. A hate crime. At the time the arrests were made, being that police said they had no motive. The murderer and his accomplice weren't additionally charged for a hate crime. However, DeAndre's family firmly believes hate was the catalyst of this murder on behalf of the way he was murdered and most of the general public who knows of this story agrees. His mother Danielle said, quote, the way he left this world was personal. It was intentional, end quote. You see, not only was DeAndre a young black man in New York City, in America, but he was a black man part of the LGBTQIA plus community. I am an ally of the community as I do support them fully in being able to live their best authentic lives without hate, without judgment, or worse, perishment. And to be a black gay man in this lifetime is still unfortunately taboo. To this day you still have people who use the word gay as a weapon against black men as if they're part of some sort of zombie apocalypse or something. You still have black gay men who are terrified to live in their truth out loud. You still have black gay men wasting women's time while living on the down low because if they tell their truth they just might become another DeAndre. DeAndre was proud of who he was. It wasn't a secret. He thankfully had a fact family that supported him. He had friends who supported him. He was loved. He was bold. He was brave. His confidence eclipsed the dark energy of demons like Isaiah and Remy. It seems as though they couldn't stand his journey of life living comfortably in his skin. It makes me wonder if maybe they were jealous of him and wish they could live out loud instead of closeted. You know, you know how that goes. Even DeAndre's mother said, quote, we know this is a hate crime. This is someone who was not happy with themselves. Some people are not as out in the open about their sex sexuality DeAndre was maybe he Isaiah was somebody he was dealing with you don't know he didn't tell us everything end quote and I agree with her people hate themselves and hate you for not feeling the same before it was revealed that Isaiah was the murderer Danielle thought maybe he met someone shortly before his murder she said how DeAndre was so gullible and trusted everybody and she hated that about him because he thought nobody would harm him. She said he made acquaintances often over the internet. Now remember I mentioned how Isaiah's mom spoke to the Daily News expressing her dismay for what her son did. Well she also said she can't see why he would want to kill someone for being gay when he has family that's part of the community. She said quote he has family that's gay so why would he do that? This doesn't make any sense end quote. Well come to find out Isaiah Isaiah and DeAndre did know each other. According to the photos that were found in DeAndre's phone, he and Isaiah have been talking for over a year. Now, in these reports I've read, it doesn't say how they were, you know, talking. It doesn't clarify if the photos seem to be in a romantic, intimate manner. It doesn't say if they were talking in a flirty, intimate way. It just says that they were talking, they were acquainted, and they had photos together. Danielle believes Isaiah and DeAndre may have had something going on, and Isaiah Isaiah just probably wasn't ready to live in his truth out loud. I also saw some people say not only was this heinous crime driven by hate of his sexual preference, but also culturally driven. Now, I'm not sure how it goes in other cities or states, but here in New York City, we do have a large percentage of Latinos and Latinas who aren't very fond of the black community. And at this point of the video, if you have an issue with anything I'm saying, feel free to respectfully disagree in 
the comments anything less will make it to VIP on my blog list but these are the facts of course not every single Latino or Latina has issues with the black community there's many people in the Latino community who are allies with the black community however a lot a lot do have issues with the black community I'm a black Hispanic soy boricua y morena my father who's from San Juan Puerto Rico is a perfect example of experiencing discrimination from some of his own people straight from Puerto Rico because they thought he was a black American due to his skin tone because my father is very dark and there will be times where he would hear them speaking in Spanish talking crazy about him calling him black monkeys and everything thinking he couldn't understand I can't even tell you how many fights I've witnessed him get into after responding right back at them in Spanish and then it all goes downhill from there but anyway I say all that to say it's unfortunate that DeAndre very well may have been a victim of multiple hate crimes at once because Isaiah and Remy were part of the Latino community. Isaiah is currently in Rikers Island in RNDC where the youth is held and one of the worst most dangerous facilities in Rikers Island with Rikers being the worst jail in New York. His next court date is on Tuesday September 5th of this year. I'm not sure about Remy as I can't seem to find him on the inmate search for New York City or New York State or the web prims website at all so I'm not sure what's going on there. If he had bail or what. I also couldn't find any images of either of the which was very frustrating to me because I felt like their faces should be plastered everywhere so we could see who these monsters are and what they're capable of. DeAndre's funeral was held at Karad Funeral Home located at 1922 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn. Pastor Louis Straker Jr. said, quote, this should not have happened. Not to DeAndre, not to someone filled with so much love and so many that love him in return. But an enemy has done this. This enemy has a four-letter name. Its name is called hate, end quote. DeAndre was the first in his family to go to college. Unfortunately, he would never have the chance to live out his dreams of social work and changing the world that way. But I pray his story can help make a difference in some way and bring more awareness to hate crimes across the nation. What's crazy is I had never even heard of this story. However, with June being Pride Month, his story was thankfully brought back up to the surface. While researching this story, I realized there had been over 30 reports done on it. Several YouTube videos were done and several news reports but for some reason it still wasn't necessarily known about what happened to DeAndre amongst the masses so it was very important to me to keep his name alive I send my deepest condolences to his wonderful mother his beautiful sister grandmother and auntie all women who never gave up on him I pray for your healing to come and I pray for your peace DeAndre may your bright spirit continue to look over your family and rest in heavenly peace